And welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Michaela's Gymnastics. I'm still hitting you guys up from my Android phone. As you guys can see, this iPhone says, no ma'am. She says, no ma'am. This iPhone says, not at all. Not today. She will not be working. So... We are still working with Ms. Andre Phone to record these videos. Yes, you know your girl. Yeah, um, <sighs> I decided I'm going to start doing a fundraiser to raise some money to get a camera and a background for Michaela Loves Gymnastics. This channel, you know, we're almost at 170. We deserve a background. We deserve a working camera. We deserve all of that goodness. So... <clears throat> Sometime in 2020, probably starting in February, I'm going to start a fundraiser to get some of this equipment that I need to grow this channel. But until then, um, this video is going to be about what happened to Alabama in Georgia in the NCAA. When I was growing up, back when the NCAA was truly the, oh, you didn't make the Olympics, or oh. We didn't win a gold medal in the Olympics, so let's go to the NCAA to see what we can do. Or, I hated my whole elite gymnastics career, so I want to find some fun in the sport again. So I'm going to go to college, right? Back then, college gymnastics was truly fifth-rate gymnastics, right? It wasn't even, it was elite junior elites, maybe level 10, and then we'll think about NCAA gymnastics. And when I say elites, I grew up in the 90s. And Team USA was good, but they was kind of like the third, fourth best team in the 90s. <clears throat> so when I say elite gymnastics, I mean worlds when we get to see the world. We used to get to see the Russians and the Romanians and the Ukrainians really come and show out. And then we had Dominique and Shannon who would do fairly well. Carrie sometimes would do fairly well. Amanda Borden would make an event final every now and again. And then going back to the Russians, Romanians, and the Ukrainians to see the big skills and the high scores. Well, and when the girls used to maybe be the alternate they would go to college right um one of the people that comes to my mind is teresa um quality teresa dang i just practiced saying her name before i started this video teresa kulikowski i think i said kulikowski she went to the university of utah and had a very successful career until her last her senior year when she um to her, her rotator cuff and her shoulder doing a belt to handstand on low bar. Um, but back then, in the late 90s, early 2000s, the teams were Georgia and Alabama. Maybe Utah would come up through the rain camp every blue moon, but it was Georgia and Alabama, Suzanne Yaklin and Sarah Patterson. And then the 2000s came along, and then the 2000 Olympic team happened, and a lot of those girls from the 2000 Olympic team went to NCAA, and I really give credit to the 2000 Olympic teams for making the NCAA what it is now, because we had Courtney Coupettes, who went to the University of Georgia, we had Courtney McCool, who went to the University of Georgia, we had Taryn Herfrey, and I know Taryn is... Courtney Coupette, Courtney McCool, and Taryn Humphrey all come from the 2004 Olympic team. But the 2000 Olympic team, I'm sorry, I skipped the whole <laughs> brain fart. We have Kristen Maloney, we have Jamie Danger, we have Mohimi Bohajwaj, who didn't even attempt to make the 2000 Olympic team. They all went to UCLA, and that's when UCLA really began their dominance in the sport. When they started really going after the the Olympians and the alternates to the Olympic teams and saying, hey, your career doesn't have to be over with just because you didn't make this Olympic team or just because you didn't win a gold medal at the Olympic Games, you could come to us and I'm going to 
get you to love the sport again. I'm going to teach you choreography and I'm going to get you involved. And when Jamie Danger and Krista Maloney went to um, UCLA, and Tasha Schweiker went to UCLA too, but as you know, four years later, after she um, was to auction in the 2004 team, <clears throat> they really made UCLA the big name school that it is right now. But it still goes to question what happened to Georgia and Alabama because Georgia had Courtney Capetz, Courtney McCool, University of Alabama had Taryn Humphrey. Why haven't those two schools been able to keep up with NCAA rules the way the rest of the schools have? Because back then, Florida was okay, but Florida wasn't one of the big schools, but it was catching up. UCLA was way down there, but they caught all the way up. I wonder what happened to make UCLA and Florida the two big um, SEC schools, whereas Alabama and Georgia, which are still have rich traditions, they're just not as successful as they once were. I think part of it is when Sarah Patterson and Suzanne Locke Yachlin both retired, and it kind of, I think they were the stars of the school more than the gymnasts. I think Suzanne and Sarah really pushed gymnastics in those schools harder than any other coach would. Um, now Georgia has a good team, and Courtney, McCool, Courtney Kupes, I'm sorry, is the coach at the University of Georgia. Oh, we can't go forget, at least Ray went to the University of Michigan, the home of Larry Nassar, but we're not going to go there today. So, um, yeah, so in the comment section, let's talk about it. What happened to the University of Georgia and the University of Alabama when it comes to NCAA gymnastics and why haven't those two schools been able to keep up with the rule changes and the recruitment process and the coaching process that teams such as the University of Florida, UCLA, OU, UCLA, LSU, um, even the University of Denver, even Auburn, I would argue, is a better team than Alabama is right now. Why? What happened? 